they can control this, they're going to control their golf ball. They're going to control ball speed. They're going to control launch, which ultimately is going to control carry, which is everything about golf. Yeah. Well done. All right, mate. So let's talk low point, right? We've got down on the ground, we've got a white line drawn here, and this is representative of where I yep, started the club face. And let's observe what happens through impact here. The club struck the ball, first point of contact just after. Mm -hmm. The club went down, let's say the bottom of the arc, which is the low point, very lowest point of this golf swing before it starts rising. You can see it's probably about four inches in front yeah. and then rising up again, right? Yeah. So Usually even with the player's left shoulder, your logo. Yeah, correct. Usually. So we see that at the moment of impact, the very bottom of the golf swing is going to be a full extension of the lead arm for sure. relative for the fact that the left hand is the highest point on the golf club relative to your right. That's going to be about underneath this armpit crease here, pretty much at the logo. And that from the address position is going to be the approximate low point, right? I would agree. So when we are working with players and we see that at the end of the day, there's three fundamentals of golf. There's impact, speed and control. You can have the greatest speed in the world. You can manage that speed really well. You can have the greatest intent with alignment, but if you're not making quality impact, those other two don't matter. Yeah. And a big skill to develop in golf is low point control. So talk to us a little bit about this exercise that we've got. Um, I see this as the biggest separator with the best players in the world versus good players, all the way down to recreational AMs that can't control this almost at all. So when I'm evaluating a player, I, I try to think in these terms. If they can control this, they're going to control their golf ball. They're going to control ball speed. They're going to control launch, which ultimately is going to control carry, which is everything about golf. If you can control how far the ball is going to go. You're going to be good. Um, so when I identify where I want the, ball, the club to land, it becomes very easy to look at the swing, where the person's nose is, where their head goes, um, where their body is, where their hips are sliding to start correlating with why can't I hit in front of this line? And from there, you should be able to fix this in three to five swings. Yeah. If you can't, then you're not focusing on the right things. Yeah. And in my coaching practice, a lot of players don't even or are not even aware of the concept of low point and the fact that, sure, through hand-eye coordination and osmosis of playing the game for a while, they figure out that a good contact is compressed. Like they kind of feel like yeah, they're squeezing good. the ball. Sounds good. But sometimes just bringing awareness to the fact that the bottom of the swing arc should be that far forward for a lot of players completely changes their intention. So then throughout the swing, their body then complements that thought, right? Yeah, for sure. So when you're working through a process, let's say you've got uh, a junior who wants to be a high performer, he's 14, 15 years old, and he's struggling with this, what would be the, the drill sequence that you would go about? I would be doing things very, very quickly to get them to hit in front of that line. Uh, generally, when someone can't hit in front of that line, there's something in their swing, whether they're throwing the club or their upper mass is moving to the right. Those are the two main things yep. that cause the player to hit the ground early. Yes. So I'm trying to identify from the face on perspective, almost always face on, why can't they do it? And then I'm starting to give them not only feels internally, but also externally saying, I want you to hit, what would you do to hit as far forward as possible? Yeah. Like, so if I said to you, set up here, mm. but I want you to hit here, but oh, by the way, you can't swing a hundred degrees left. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. gotta somehow shift your body. Yeah. Uh, then the player starts to start to figure out, this is how I move to shift this low point forward. It's almost never too far forward. Yeah. Most players are too far behind the line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, when I'm working through a process with a beginner golfer that comes in, it might be their first lesson. Uh, I always do that exact same exercise. What I do is I explain the concept of the bottom of the arc, right? Where that should be and where a professional is versus an amateur. I think on average, they did a study 30 million golfers and the average low point for the amateur was two inches behind. That's, that's not good folks. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad. That's six inch difference, right? Yeah. That's half a sub. So yeah. when we're standing here, I will get the players I'll put this as a general reference. I get a black alignment rod. I place it in the center. I say, what I want you to do is pretend that we're in the world's most dangerous airport TV show. And if you don't get your airplane landing on this side, it's end of days, right? Yeah. So I don't care what you need to do, but you need to get your golf club hitting up here and they'll try and they'll hit here yeah. and then they'll miss. And just sim simply through that skill development exercise over time, 
and shifting their focus and their attention, they start to develop that skill, right? And it is a skill. Mm. It is absolutely a skill to be able to move that. Yeah. And if you can do that, you become so much better, not only here, but like chipping in the bunker. Yeah. Being able to move your low point with your driver. It's yeah. huge. I think that the reason that uh, some players are really good at driving it, but they're not very good with their irons is because the freedom to be able to hit up on it and to miss the ground, but be able to hit the tee, that doesn't translate here. I think controlling your low point on the ground is way harder than hitting a driver. Yeah, correct. You got, you got a little bit of room for error there with it teed up, right? Yeah. And pertaining specifically to this exercise here, so let's say this player sets up and the first couple of times he's missing, the cue that you would give him would be maybe just focus on a specific point of grass that he wants to hit or? I would try to do an external and an internal thought. So the external would be, yeah, I want you to focus on hitting this. I would try to find the lowest hanging fruit for that player, which generally to me seems to be where their nose is going. Yeah. If I can get their nose to move laterally towards the target, they have a much higher success rate of hitting the ground more in front. Yeah. So I'll say, okay, I'll put a stick off their right ear. I'll say, move, move your right ear off the stick, move your nose in front of that line, and then hit as far forward as you can. Yeah. And I don't care how far forward. Exaggerate this as much as you can. Yeah. And I, and I think a lot of players, they would get concerned about hitting the ground that far forward. But one thing to consider is if the club is actually hitting here, it's still coming in relatively shallow like an airplane landing by the time it's coming through. So you might hit what's called a pro side thin, yeah. where you hit the top of the equator, right? Whereas an amateur thin would be coming through and then rising up in that direction. So that would be... Especially if the club has a bunch of bounce on it. It just it, bounces and then it thins it. Correct, yeah. correct. So it would be, this would be a, uh, let's call it an amateur top shot or a thin shot. Yep. That one there. Your mass went so that way. So far back. Yep. And then... The counter movement. I'm trying to move that way, but everything's moving that way. The alternative would be this one. So I went too far forward, but even the intention of that, that had a lot of speed on it relative to the first one. For sure. Right? So even though the outcome, a top shot, doesn't look great, we're a lot closer to where we need to be with that second one than the first one. Here's what I know about really good players is when they, Alex Noren, for example, when he's on the driving range, he's hitting shots exactly how you just hit them because he's so good at exaggerating the movement yeah. to where he is going to hit some shots like that. I would challenge most people that they couldn't actually do that because they can't go far enough down the road yeah. where if I, can, if I can reach the extreme, I can always back it down. Mm -hmm. But if you can't get to the extreme, then you're probably not going to accelerate this skill development as fast as someone like Alex Noren. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a very important topic to touch on. It's like leaning into the dis discomfort of change. Yeah. And when it, for example, we go to work out in the gym, when we're working out a muscle group we haven't for a while, we get delayed onset of muscle soreness, our body's sore. And intuitively, we know that that's a good thing because it means that your body's growing. You don't go, oh, I'm sore, I'm never going to do that again. But well, with, you might, but no, yeah. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you don't. But with players, right, we see that we go, oh, well, it's hitting over there. That mustn't be good. Yeah. And they try and be too perfect. But when you're trying to be too perfect, essentially, you're not exaggerating it enough for what you need to do in that moment, right? When you see players rehearse their swings, they're rehearsing the swing that they want. Yeah. They're not rehearsing the movement in an exaggerated state, except for really, really good players. Really good players exaggerate the state because they know that they're not actually going to do that when it goes to full speed. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The difference between feel and real. I play around with my swing a little bit and I'll feel like I'm doing something drastic after playing and coaching this game for most of my life. And then I'll put it on film and I'm like, oh my God, God I, I need to do any. it more. I need yeah. to do it more. Which if, if, if I was looking face on and I could see two or three inches of shift in the, in the nose or the ear, I'm, the player's gonna leave here hitting it much, much better. Yeah, much better. So let's say they've done that and they're hitting the ground, then we introduce a ball. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. introduce a ball and see, I wouldn't go full speed yet. Mm -hmm. I'm probably staying in the lead arm parallel to the ground on both sides. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately, I want players leaving being able to hit full shots. I yeah. think it can kind of be misleading for them never to hit. Just a little full. chip oh, I'm shots. hitting my yeah. chip shots really well. That, that doesn't really matter, especially if you gotta go play in a couple days. Yeah. So ultimately, yeah, starting with some half, then going into full, not full speed, and then ultimately full speed. Yeah. And the and if they can hit in front of that line, 
ball flight's going to be much, much better, much lower, especially here in Texas. <laughs> yeah. It needs to be flat. Right now. Yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's say we map this out. We do some dry drills without the golf ball first. Lead arm parallel, trail arm parallel, back and through. Now, when I'm doing this, still allowing my wrists to hinge the golf club. I'm not being stiff and rigid and trying to yeah. do it. Recreate. And I'm definitely adding some cues as I see the player. For example, I might say, it's okay for you to make more ground contact. Yeah. Especially if you're someone constantly thin it. Okay, let's yeah. get the club deeper into the turf. Yeah. Um, so little cues here and there, adding hinge, holding the lag a little bit would also move the low point more forward. Yeah. I might say more pressure in your left foot. Anything to keep moving you towards the target. Yeah. Um, there are tons of drills that could go with this. The Gary player step drill. There's tons of yeah. things. So many things like oh, this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, at the end of the day, players are very good if they have an objective. But I, if I didn't even coach anyone, I said, just draw that line and you figure out how to do that. People will figure out how to do that. It goes back to what you said is that people don't think about it. Yeah. If they just thought about how to do that, people are very creative. Mm. So I think that they would. Yeah, yeah, that would manage now, it. You'll accelerate with somebody hopefully good at coaching can get you there faster, but it's a great start. Yeah, I, I, th I think exercises such as this is great because players at home can do this. And as a coach, we know if their intent is to get as proficient as they possibly can at hitting the ground in front of this line, they're not harming their golf swing at all, right? <laughs> because the only one is if they start swinging 15 degrees left to do it. Yeah, so exactly. So that, they're like, that is one way, right? To steepen the strike would be to do that. But caveat, don't do that. Yeah. Put things in the way that don't allow that. But most players don't do that. They start going through the lateral shift, the pressure shift into their lead side, which is ultimately what will increase club head speed. It would move the low point forward. It'd be a much more athletic motion that most people can do. They just, how many golfers have been told, Keep your head still. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, then I'm not going to, I'm going to hit the ground early. Probably if you keep your head still, you're not going to hit it well. So I, th I think a, a great thought to go along with this would be brush the ground in front of the line in the direction of the target. Yeah. Yeah. Make probably the easiest, yes. easiest way to do it. Yes. And I think most players intuitively would tend to want to do that after a period of time. Right. Yeah, for sure. So after I've done a couple of those little small reps, feeling that my cue is a little bit more pressure on the lead foot. As you can see, my arms are nice and long post impact through the ball. That helps the club get down into the ground. I'm not being afraid to hit the ground. That's always a positive. Yeah. Then stepping into it, I'm just going to do a nice little small one here. Let's have a look at where this divot finishes. It looks a lot like the other one. Yeah, absolutely. I would like to see a, a 10 shot line. The entry point, the depth would be the same. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay. Cheers.